Good morning, Peter Gertz. I'm a psychiatrist. Let's talk about conduct disorder and antisocial personality disorder. And they're quite similar. The conduct disorder is made for children. The antisocial personality disorder diagnosis is made for adults. And I have a problem in the sense that it's hard to know what to do sometimes. So let me tell you why I'm talking about this. This past week, I saw a 15 year old gentleman, young adolescent man, boy, and he would, he'd been violent, dangerous. And I saw him in the emergency room and he was calm, sort of cooperative, not friendly, dismissive. Um, it seemed like he was quite annoyed by the whole process, but I did not see any sign of psychosis, serious depression, any other quickly treatable or relatively quickly addressable psychiatric issue. So here we are, a young gentleman who's been violent, out of control at home, dangerous, but there's no quickly discernible psychiatric issue that would necessarily be easily treatable in a hospital. So what do we do with a gentleman like this? So here's the background a little bit. So with conduct disorder, we're talking about children with aggression, destruction of property, deceitfulness, so lying a lot. And this gentleman, the young boy that I saw was like that also. He denied that there was any problem leading to his presentation in the emergency room. They ignore rules and they're cruel to animals often. So that's the conic disorder general situation. And the antisocial personality disorder situation is quite similar. It's just targeted for adults and these are people who engage in criminal activity, they lie, they lack remorse. And you see them quite frequently as a psychiatrist and how to try and help them. It's a very difficult issue. We have the medical system, we have the criminal justice system, and these people seem to straddle both systems. And it can be very difficult to help them, if at all possible sometimes. So one thing that helps me to try and put things in perspective is to realize that if a child acts like that, so aggressive to other people, destruction of property, cruelty to animals, what is that telling you? In general, at least very often, it's telling you that child has had the same type of thing done to them. So if all of a sudden a child becomes, he's been doing well in school, no problems, all of a sudden he starts becoming violent, aggressive, not listening to any suggestions, not considering other people. What does that tell you? More than likely, he's being abused or mistreated in a similar way. It's not 100%, but more than likely. So that helps me to put things in perspective, see these people as human beings, which they are. It can be sometimes hard to see them as human beings because they don't act like human beings necessarily. They can be very violent, again, cruel to animals, etc. So they are human beings though, and that helps me to put things in perspective, but it doesn't necessarily give me great ideas on how to help them. So we wanna have compassion. We wanna also look at whether there are other diagnoses involved. For instance, often if someone, for instance, has been mistreated in childhood, they've been slammed against the wall, they've been beaten. There can be a traumatic brain injury from childhood even. So there can be other things involved that are not just, quote, personality issues. So as far as treatment, it can be very difficult why would a hospital want to try and treat a young man like the gentleman I talked about, the 15 year old, who had been in the hospital, he was aggressive, violent, non-cooperative in the hospital, he disrupted the care of other patients and was very difficult for staff to deal with. So 
a hospital setting may well not be helpful at all. On the other hand, what is the alternative? And that to me seems very sad. The alternative is to send a 15 year old into the criminal justice system, which may be for life then in the criminal justice system, at least in and out. And in the criminal justice system, he gets together with other boys who've done the same type of thing and they can pretty much, at least at times, put each other on that track for life, the criminal track for life, and that can create a very difficult, painful life for them. So for me, it's very sad to see a young person, a teenager, instead of going into the medical system, going into the criminal justice system and maybe staying on that track for life. On the other hand, I certainly understand the medical system has a hard time helping these people because there's nothing immediately treatable. You want to, if they're willing, you want to have psycho, have them go into psychotherapy, talk about whatever abuse they've been through, and maybe gradually get some idea of where all this is coming from, talk about potential head trauma, maybe get a CAT scan. So gradually, in my opinion, there may well be ways of treating these people if they're willing and some people may be able to get good treatment in prison even because one advantage of prison is they're more than likely gonna have their appointments, they're not gonna not show up or just drop out of treatment. So I'm open to any ideas. This is a very difficult, sad issue to see young people, adolescents being put into the criminal justice system and maybe staying in that system for life. Thank you.